question about it. Uh, this league is just a lot of parity in this league. Anybody can win on any, any given night. And, you know, you have to be ready to play, though, regardless of what the see is, you know, whoever comes out and performs here tonight. Robert Moore is able to win the tip. They won it the first game and lost it the second game. And a quick foul on Markel Frazier. That was something that was very limited in the first two matchups between these two teams. Detroit Mercy did a good job of not fouling and getting themselves in bad situations. Well, you can see them starting out in that traditional zone defense right now. And I'm sure they tweaked it to make it a little bit better. Robert Morris kind of had a lot of answers to it in that second game. So we'll see how it worked for them early in this game. Tracy feeds it to the corner to one of the hottest players in the league in vain. Tracy can't get it off in time. 24 second violation. So Detroit was successful. That zone, you hear a lot of conversation, a lot of chatter. And Coach Davis uh, at practice, uh, they was talking about the communications is key to work in that zone. He said Robert Morris was the first team to get them quick <laughs> out of the zone defense. Yeah. He has liked to play that the first half and then mix in the man-to-man -man in the second half. He also liked the way his team played man in that second half, though. Well, he mentions that, uh, you know, Robert Morris College will play the s same kind of offense, whether it's zone or man-to-man. -man. They still continue to run their offense. A lot of patience, uh, looking for the right shot, a lot of good ball movement, and uh, they're really efficient offensively. It's Ferris, Williams, Spear, Tracy, and Bain for Robert Morris. Davis, Waterman, Quill, Brandon, and Frazier for Detroit Mercy. Bain, four straight games of 10 or more. First time he's done that since his sophomore campaign. And Ferris hits one on a line to begin the scoring here tonight. I tell you, Ferris is a freshman, but he certainly doesn't play like it. He had a lot of big buckets on the last game against the Titans. And he's a guy that really could knock down that outside shot. 18 combined points in the series thus far. Waterman hounded up top by John Williams. He's looking to have a bounce back game here tonight. Frazier dipping inside, six to shoot. Quoll having some issues with Spear. Now four to shoot. Quoll targeting the basket, blocked. And that's gonna be another shot clock violation. Each team has one. Well, Spear doing an excellent job that time of moving his feet, staying down, not going for any of the fakes or anything, and was able to force the 24 second violation with the block shot over Cool. So a little bit different start to this one. Robert Morris had a pretty hot start to the second game. They're up 4 nothing, and then the defense has kind of flexed their muscles. A lot of energy, though, by them. They started with a dunk, only leading to a good first half of basketball for the Colonials. There's the aforementioned Cam Ferris. Once again, Ferris getting to the spot. Nice 15-foot jump shot. Up and in. Averaging around eight points a game. 22 minutes a contest. The young freshman out of Vermont. And this is also something we saw a lot. The shot clock winding down quickly for the Titans. who was already halfway down and not really able to move the ball at all. What's the best way to counteract that? Is it just you know making sure you get that good shot and not rushing? Yeah, you have to take your time, move the ball around, make sure you get the good opportunity shots, but you got to give Robert Morris a lot of credit for the solid defense they're playing early here in this game. Good exchange for Bain as he traveled on his way. The officials conferring with each other to make sure they had the same call. It's Chad Barlow, Ed Phillips, Joshua White, and the extra official today is Jordan Love at the table. 5-0 Colonials. They have a 2-for-3 start from the field. Titans 0-for-3. Davis gets the pick from Chris Brandon. Lost a pass over the top there for Waterman, and he gets an arm bar from John Williams. And what you just saw right in front of us here at the scorer's table is what Mike Davis wants to see out of Chris Brandon, the good screens. Oh, no question, uh, you know, with the new plays that they put in, he's required to get people open, do a good job, hold his positions, not get called for the offensive foul. Last game, he did a great job of that and have to continue to do that to make things happen. Davis has his first make. He's one for two from three in the early goings here today. Five, three, Robert Morris. Bain is wide open. He'll knock it down when he's that wide open, but not this time as Frazier picks up the rebound. 
Markel does a great job barreling his way to the hoop, as you see there, too far. And Spear is in perfect position. Spear is in Bain for the two guys that will be looking to attack both defense and offensive boards, both athletic and active. Bain from the free throw line trying to create himself now and able to get the foul against Antoine Davis. It's the second against Detroit Mercy here in the first half. Well, Bain's doing a good job of getting his head down that time and looking to attack the basket. And, uh, you know, Antoine's complaining about the call. He said he had both hands up in the air. The officials thought otherwise. Charles Bain with 19 points and 18 points in game one and game two of the series versus Detroit Mercy. Definitely benefiting, you'd think, from the shots missing from A.J. Brahma, but it's all about taking that opportunity. It's not easy to say, hey, here's <laughs> here's a lot of the post touches. Go score 18, 19 a game. He's put on a nice show for them. Well, it's all about stepping up. You know, A.J. Brahma decided to leave the team. Somebody had to fill that void, and you know, him and Spears have done a good job of, of making up the difference uh, from losing that kind of productivity out of a star player. Brahma, top three rebounder and scorer for the Horizon League before announcing he's transferring after the Youngstown State Series. Davis gets the exchange, three is short. You could tell from his reaction, and Bain ends the possession. He's got two boards and two points early on for Robert Morris, who has a seven to three gritty lead here in the first. Kowal. Nearly lost the handle as Spear was right on his behind there, but he was able to seal it off. Here's Davis galloping his way in, off for Quoll, fakes him out, wants to drive, and draws the foul. <laughs> Opening day is soon here in Detroit. It's 7-3 with 15.32 to go in the first half. Welcome back, everyone, to Callahan Hall. 7-3, the Colonials lead here early on. Take a peek at the final standings. According to wins in the Horizon League, the Titans would have had a third seed if everything was set normal, I guess. Wright State, Cleveland State, Detroit Mercy, NKU in straight wins. Detroit Mercy comes in as the five. Robert Morris right where they would have been if things were normal as well. Matt Johnson into the ball game. Immediately gets it off for Bull Cole. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. The Titans want to create here. Struggling from the field to begin things. Just one of six, one of four from three. Antoine fade away into travel. Hmm. Good move by Davis that time. A little shuffling of the feet on the step back. Officials on top of it. Makes the traveling call. Done a much better job of taking care of the basketball down the stretch, averaging about five and a half assists per game in the last 12 games is Antoine Davis. <laughs> 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 
Tracy did a good job defensively against Antoine in that first game. Hands it back to John Williams. He scored just two points in the second game, one of six from the field. Shot clock down to six. Spear barreling, no. Bain from behind, able to clean it up for two. Got to find people and get a body on the offensive rebounds is something you don't want to happen. And Bain's doing a good job looking to attack those offensive boards every time. Fourteen thirty-two left to go in this gutsy first half so far. Quo three, Boing's off the back, and Brandon is in a perfect spot to get it. Titans not just quite in sync offensively so far, and that one will hang on the top of the iron and fall back in. Whoa, you got to give Chris Brandon some credit for not touching that <laughs> basketball. Came real close, hanging on the lip of the rim. He was ready to put it back in. That's an easy put-back slam for number <laughs> twenty-one. <laughs> Spear good feed to Ferris and a skip off the inside and there is Waterman to leap for that one. It's Davis, Quall, Brandon, Johnson, Frazier out here right now. Good job by Ferris to lock in on Johnson as well. He wants a two way too far and Brandon able to get it back. He's been alert here today. Davis wide open, pings it through. The Titans struggling somewhat, you know, offensively right now, trying to find their way. Uh, you got to give the Colonials a lot of credit. They're playing solid defense down on this end of the floor. Forced a couple turnovers against Detroit Mercy already, and Johnson gets a piece on the much bigger Bane from behind. Davis looks confident. Targets to the cup, shy, and Bane again. Will get his fourth rebound already. Four and four for Charles Bain. Seven rebounds in game two, four rebounds in game one for Bain. Half of the shot clock to go. Ferris in front of the Titan bench. Once again, the long arms of Brandon. Sky up. Well, they're going to need a big rebounding game out of Brandon tonight. He needs to be alert and attack those boards. They got two guys he's got to go against, and he's got to battle them underneath. And a foul off the basketball then against Bo Quall. It's going to be his first and team third here in the first half. It's 9-8 with 12.36 left to play here in this first half. Not the way you would expect this one to start, uh -huh. huh? Well, it's definitely been a defensive game so far. Uh, low scoring, you know, out of both teams. And both teams trying to find their way right now. Mike Davis already giving your officials an earful here today. Traded Williams into the ball game for the first time. Second block. Yeah, you got to like Matt Johnson's defensive effort. And not only he's a good offensive player, but he definitely get it done on the defensive end of the floor as well. Williams able to light up the three. That's their leading scorer right there, and he's very capable. Just one of six from the field and 0 of five from three-point land and Game number two versus these two teams. Davis targets Johnson, and he draws a block. I think Tracy wanted a little off-arm push. Not so. The fouls are even at three apiece. The score is 12-8 Colonials. Do we really need a sign to live, laugh, and love? Yes. The answer is no. I can help new homeowners not become their parents. Kiana. Nope. Koei Noah. No. Joaquin. No. It just takes practice. Give it a shot. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's a constant battle. We're going to open a PDF. Who's next? Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, oh, okay. but we can save you money when you bundle home and auto with us. No fussing, no cussing, and no laughing. It's always out there. The horizon. A reminder that our greatest goals are rarely attained. And as soon as you reach one, another emerges. But every day we rise and work harder, dig deeper, ask one more question, take one more shot in relentless pursuit of our horizon. There's a cute guy from 12C. Go talk to him. Yeah, no. Plus, it's not even like he'd be into me or whatever.
moved in, right? I would love to tell you about all the great savings you can get for bundling your renters and car insurance with Progressive. Oh, I was just... Oh, Tammy! I found her retainer in the dryer. Take a peek at some of the Horizon League awards. Antoine Davis for the third straight season, part of the first team all-conference selection. A couple Wright State Raiders there as well. Second team, Bohannon, Basili, Faulkner, Burke, and Davis. Some really good names and up-and-comers there. Bo Quoll for the Titans, name on the third team, along with Lucas and Warwick, one of the freshman phenoms. And there's the other awards as well. Matt Johnson, the sixth player of the year. And loud in love for the third straight year, your Horizon League Player of the Year. He's been a dominant force throughout the Horizon League all year long. It's Waterman, Quall, Davis, Johnson, and Isiani out there right now for Detroit Mercy. Quall with four to shoot. Got it. Boy, did the <laughs> Detroit Mercy <laughs> Titans need that. They made him work for it, though. There's no question about it. And if you notice uh, this game, we're almost 10 minutes into this game, and and Noah Waterman has not attempted a shot. Robert Morris has done a wonderful job of not letting him get any shots off. And those are the first points not scored by Antoine Davis. Antoine gets a tip steal here. Titans want to run in transition. Line drive three. Johnson made that difficult on the rebound, but couldn't keep it in play. Good hustle play by Johnson. You got to like the effort that time. Went up after the offensive board, couldn't grab it, but was able to knock it away. Unfortunately, the Titans couldn't come up with that. And I think this year was one of the lone years that Loudon Love wasn't the shoe-in to be player of the year. I mean, you could argue Antoine Davis's freshman year is neck and neck as well, but there were so many other guys contributing for Wright State, you thought maybe there's a chance that Antoine Davis gets it, or Jalen Moore when he was hot at the beginning of the year. Kind of cooled down as the year has gone on. Just four to shoot here. Trying to drive all the way to the free throw line and stick it is Traden Williams. Wow. Uh, they upset because that ball went off his knee into the backcourt. That should have been a turnover. It shouldn't have went back to Robert Morris. You know, if they replayed that because they knocked the ball back into the backcourt. No Titan touched that basketball that time. Four-point lead for the Colonials. Detroit Mercy really testing that despite shooting just four of 13 from the field thus far and two of seven from three. Robert Morris already five of 13 and two of five all put together. Dwayne Rose Jr. gonna see his first action here today for Bull Quoll. Dwayne Rose Jr. is another guy that's, that's very capable. Um, you know, struggled a little bit late in the season, but you know, the Oakland series, he had wonderful games and he's very capable. 20 seconds left in the shot clock here. Johnson trying to get into the scoring party here. It's only been Antoine Davis and Bull Quall. Antoine with eight. Waterman wide open. How often he misses that. First attempt here, 10 minutes gone off the clock and finally found him for a shot. So they're gonna have to work, uh, get these guys open to get open looks. He's been out there all 10 minutes. Sumnik also seeing some action here. John Williams thinks about it. Enoch Cheeks also into the ball game. Back out to Williams. Little teardrop and a charge taken by Willie Isiani. Willie's wonderful at that. He's been doing that consistently all season long. He'll sacrifice his body. He'll take his place in that lane. Knowing that he's not a shot blocker, but he knows how to get position down there to draw the charges. And uh, he's been extremely effective with that throughout this season. We've talked about it as the season has gone on. He had a huge role in terms of minutes. I mean, he was averaging... 28 minutes a game, started the first six contests, and since only has started one game and averaging about 10 minutes a game. But when you need a big play like that, when you needed a big cut to the basket and a two, he's right there. It's about staying ready. Davis well covered and maybe a little bit too well covered. Is trade in Williams gonna convert his first foul? Well, you got to like the way Davis is not selling for just taking that three-point shot. He's always looking to attack now first and, you know, shoot the long ball later. Chris Brandon going to sub in for Noah Waterman. You can kind of see Mike Davis trying to keep 
some of his guys a little bit more on the bench. You know, whether it's a, a minute or two here, Bo Cole's not going to sit there for too long, but he doesn't necessarily want to play him 40 minutes, 38 minutes a game if he doesn't have to. Well, you just mentioned Noah, uh, 10 straight minutes in a row. He's going to give him a little bit of a breather here. Frazier also checked in at the last dead ball. Quoll is actually right back at the scorer's table. I'm sure he jockeyed for it. Seven seconds to shoot. Davis fading away. Bingo. I tell you, that's a very difficult shot uh, to handle right there. Davis is able to draw, get in, and take one step back on one leg, fading away, and he's able to knock that shot down. Not too many players can do that. 14-12 Colonial just clenching onto that lead. Sumnik. Draws a foul against Isiani. That's the fourth on the Titans. Already six on the Colonials with 8 and 52 to play in the first. Here's Mike Davis trying to lead another team. His red tournament run was so good. And not necessarily focusing on the non-conference. I mean, he's been at smaller stops. I mean, when you start in Indiana, I guess you can call <laughs> UAB <laughs> and Texas Southern and Detroit Mercy small stops. He's got some experience. He brings a lot of it to the table. Williams travels but the the point is you know at a program at a mid-major let's face it yes you have to schedule the Notre Dames the Michigans of the world to get by with some of your budget and collect some of that guaranteed money but you're also challenging yourself and making yourself better for the conference season and you look up now I mean they were scuffling so hard even to start Horizon League play but they finish at 10 and 6. Well, a lot of teams you see do that. Oakland's another team that plays a tough schedule before the season start and actually get your players ready. Davis pure from the near side. He has 13 you know, 5 of 9 shooting so far. Much more efficient here tonight. Shot around the 33% mark in the previous two games. You want to see other guys step up and give him a hand. Uh -oh. Deep offensively and I'm sure you know that will happen Spear is off the mark didn't look all too comfortable taking that shot and now Detroit Mercy trying to add on their first lead of the ball game Quoll can help you do that Davis toying with Spear here stays locked in runs the baseline there is Rose Jr. haven't seen him do that in a while taking his time getting his feet together and you know Antoine Davis has really become a distributor now you know, his penetration, he's, you know, he'll pick you apart. You run the double teams, he's been able to find the players that's open. 27 assists in the last five games for Detroit Mercy for Antoine Davis. Turnovers have been pretty low as well. Assist to turnover ratio has gotten better as the year has gone on for Antoine. Six to shoot, this defense locking in. Spear got some contact, no call, and there is Frazier. Huh. Detroit Mercy up a man here. Contested three, heat check, and Quoll is there. An offensive foul as he brings the elbow up and drives into the chest of Khalil Spear. We've got a track meet all of a sudden. It's a four-point lead for the home team.
Jeremy and Earl back with you here from historic Callahan Hall. There's Traden Williams taking a little bit of an extra drink and breath before he gets back on the floor. Andy Toole admitted that Traden, you know, came out guns a-blazing in that second game and tweaked a nagging injury and really wasn't the same going down the stretch, but said that's just something the freshman's got to learn. Sometimes you don't really know how to play when you're not 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, he's the guy that, you know, highly recruited uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's you know, a guy that's going to really learn from this experience and something to look forward to down the future for this team. Good passing. Bain couldn't get it to go. A little bit too open that time. <laughs> to expect to find himself with nothing challenging him at the rim. The ghost of Callahan in front that time. Four-point lead for Detroit Mercy. They've been building that in recent minutes. Frazier, good tucking pass for Brandon, and he converts. Good find inside right there. And they got to do a little bit more of that, you know, driving to the basket, finding a guy like Chris Brandon around the basket. 10-0 run for Detroit Mercy. Fair is deep tray, short, good scooping, rebound by Brandon. Antoine Davis, 5 of 10 thus oh. far, is that one <laughs> a little bit too overanxious he, too. Yeah, he had the wrong guy that time. I don't I think <laughs> Frazier might have thought that was, might have been Chris Brandon because he threw that one to the top of the backboard. <laughs> well, Dwayne Rose just shows sometimes that he has a pretty good vertical, but I'm not sure that uh, he uh, could have got that one. No, that, that was a, a little bit too high. And Frazier with a little smile. He, he knew he made a mistake on that one. Robert Morris, after a decent start from the field now, just 5 of 17, 29%. Detroit Mercy improving. They're at 42%. They finished 51% last game. Tracy Scrappy. Thinks about the pull-up. Fades it to Ferris. 10 seconds left, and Cole says thank you. Another man up here. Tic-tac-toe to Davis around the cylinder and off. Oh, that's a tough one for the Titans that time. Opportunity for an easy opportunity that time. And Davis a little short on the layup. Robert Morris needs a bucket here. Davis all the way. Good. Davis making sure that time. Getting a hand in that passing lane. Was able to get out and, and get a steal. Had a couple key steals last game, too. He's working hard on both ends of the floor. He has 15 already. Looking for his 59th 20 point or more game in his career. 59, how about that? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, 19, 30 or more games, three, 40 or more games. Nearly a 50 point game against Wright State his freshman year. I was right here at Callahan Hall. And that possession will go back to the Titans and the turnover is mounting for Robert Morris. That's number eight of the game, five for the Titans thus far. Waterman is back in for Frazier here. Titans catching a break on that one because Trace is, you know, he's a, he's a good shooter. He's showed us that in the last couple of games. Wide open that time and that one came off the backboard pretty hard. Davis, Waterman, Brandon, Rose, and Quall here for Detroit Mercy. Ferris, Williams, Spear, Bain, and Tracy for Robert Morris. Fakes him out. Dagger. <laughs> Seems like one of those nights for Davis. He's feeling it, taking his time, patient that time. Got a good up fake. Got the guy in the air and was able to drain that one. Here's the last four minutes of the half, like Earl always talks about. Detroit Mercy winning it thus far as we approach that mark. Good find for Quall. Held it an extra beat as he collected himself for two. And just like that, Andy Toole sees his team head spin in this game. Wants a full timeout, and that will head us to break as well. 27 to 14, the Detroit Mercy lead just four minutes left here in the first half.
obviously. I have not been to the zoo since. What? Switch to progressive and you can save hundreds. You know, like the sign says. You're always gonna be welcome here. Your professors actually care for you. You're not just another name on a paper. I'm a totally different person. I have to be out there and be a leader. When you look around, you see there's so many people doing amazing things here. It's easy to feel at home here. You see the same people every day, but you meet someone new every day as well. Detroit Mercy has really driven home the kind of values that I want to carry with me for the rest of my life. I'm so happy I made this choice. I really am. Detroit Mercy. Build a boundless future. You've never been afraid to go all in. I guess. There's a place for people who have hard work in their DNA. Where strivers, drivers, and doers get the experience to turn what makes them who they are into what will make them great. So what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Juju. If you're as serious about your success as we are, bring it. Robert Morris University. Get ready. Welcome back to the Progressive Insurance Horizon League Basketball Championships here tonight. Jeremy Otto alongside Earl Curitan to bring you the call. First game of four here tonight in the Horizon League to kick off the Division I Conference Championships here in the NCAA. First game right here. Another game won't be tipping off for at least 35 more minutes. Well, we're getting the party started right here sure at Callahan are. Hall. <laughs> Youngstown State, UIC, Green Bay, Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Milwaukee, IUPUI, all tipping off at 8 p.m. here tonight. Traden Williams off for John Williams. Tracy can't get it to fall as Waterman collapses for the rebound. Mm. Tracy got it back. He's got some speed to the front court here, blocked away by Brandon. The size matchup not in favor of number three there. They do keep it. All that effort and hustle, you want to come up with the basketball on a play like that. John Williams off for Spear. Fades it in for two. Spear has his first couple points. He was previously 0 for 3. Well, you want to watch closely here these last three minutes. We try to talk about that four-minute point right now, that timeout that Robert Morris just called. And We'll see how the Titans respond. So far, not so good. Two possessions and two turnovers. Another offensive foul down low. Second time we've seen that here today. That was Waterman, and that's going to be his second in the first half. Team number six. Six as well on the Colonials thus far. Five for Ferris, three for Williams, two for Spear, four for Bain, and two for Williams. That's the up and down scoring we've seen so far by the Colonials. Detroit Mercy much more one-sided to start the night. 18 for Antoine Davis, four for Quall, two for Brandon, and three for Dwayne Rose Jr. As Markel Frazier will run the offense here. Antoine Davis getting some rest. 240 left to play here in this first half. Cool line drive, yes. Very, uh, big basket that time for the Titans. Uh, the two turnovers they were able to come back and put something in a hole. Titans shot 43% from three in that second game. Bain trying to get it going. Uh, Bain's getting that low position down that time. Good move that time. Good up fake, taking the ball to the basket. He struggled from the field so far tonight, two of seven, but does have six and four for Robert Morris. Skip pass for Waterman. He drives, lays it up, no good. Brandon with a tip. Tries to get it a third time, but Spear denied him that chance. And Spear's second rebound, and Tracy and company will run the point, making sure they get a good possession. Jacks up a three, hit it. Boy, did they need that. Big shot that time. William shuffling his feet a little bit on that shot. He's able to get it off, and he's, you know, he's been a consistent player for them, especially from that three-point line. He's made both threes. He's attempted today. Causes Mike Davis to burn 
a 30 second timeout probably not what they talked about in the previous media timeout take a peek at the series history it's growing <laughs> as we speak <laughs> only one game between these two teams heading into this year but Robert Morris joining the Horizon League and they say let's play Detroit Mercy three times I never thought uh, this would happen I was looking for you know the series the games to come and never we ended up playing them three times and uh opportunity is great for me to sit here and watch both teams I played for compete against each other in this way sitting next to the two-time Hall of Famer for both sides 2007 Hall of Fame for Detroit Mercy He's had his number retired here back last year in 2020 and a Hall of Famer for the Colonials in 1991 only one division one season their first ever pretty cool to be a part of that no doubt that's where I got my start at Robert Morris College and a finish right here with the Titans at home Johnson make sure he's still in bounds here Davis back into the ball game he has 18 here tonight the screen from Isiani six to shoot now doubles outside contested three yes not much you can do about it you got to love this defense uh, but there's really no t defense for Antoine Davis I don't care how hard you play he's gonna find a way to make it happen he's definitely been the difference here in the first half for the Titans there's his 59th career 20 or more game Tracy back out to spear hop steps his way to a Detroit Mercy basketball 33 21 39 and 8 tenths to go here in the first half it's been a little bit of an odd one I mean we saw an early Robert Morris lead they had as big as a nine to three advantage which doesn't sound like much but that was nearly six minutes into the contest I'll tell you the energy is there for Robert Morris and it's just you know can they withstand this throughout 40 minutes of basketball and we we saw them wilter in the second half of the game last time and uh, they extended a lot of energy here in this first half of the game Davis from the parking lot just like his freshman year there's not much you can do about that he's feeling it tonight it looks like one of those nights we've seen him uh, he's capable of putting up 40 points and uh, he's well on his way right now John Williams against Chris Brandon on the outside dashes to his left floats it up and fills it up heading to the line for one more as well we got to give Williams some credit on that doing a good good job uh, Brandon staying in front of him is able to go off one leg and put that shot in he's he's, he's a big time scorer he can put points on the board and we talked about his inefficiency I guess in the second game he can't get any better three for three from the field two of two from three eight points and make it nine to begin this one that's a huge basket makes it 36 24 and a little bit of a momentum change at the end possibly for these Colonials well, no doubt you know Detroit Detroit realized that uh, this team right here is not going away they know they got to come out strong in the second half of the ball game they take the lead into the locker room absolutely nothing they got 20 minutes of basketball to play and I'm sure that you know, Robert Morris is gonna look a way to find their way back in it man up they come in to play basketball and the Titans have to come out and be aggressive here and find other scores here in the second half of this game well that man is now the third leading scorer in Detroit Mercy history passing Dave to Busher he just needed seven to tie and eight to surpass and also a couple baskets ago notched his 2000th point of his career he's at 2002 to begin this second half 24 points overall for Antoine that's it that's incredible he's uh, destroying the record books here in Titan territory and uh, he's he's a guy that you know the NBA has got to be looking at continue to keep playing basketball like this and, and I know he's got another year home hopefully we get a chance to see that only John Long and Rashad Phillips are left two big time names huh oh no question about it John Long was a great scorer to, to me would have been the all-time scorer in school history if they had a three-point line in his in his time but Rashad Phillips you know stepped up to the plate and was extremely consistent I watched a lot of his games and, but this kid is something different here long playing from 75 to 78 Phillips from 98 to 2001 
There's no bigger supporter of Antoine Davis on Twitter than Rashad Phillips, and that's why. <laughs> Uh, he, he'll give you a show. He, uh, he struggled a little bit in the early goings of this season, but man, when he catches on, uh, it's incredible. Tracy barrels it outside to Spear, trying to break this tight and run. Brandon trying to continue it as he disrupts that one. Still 15 to shoot, though. The lob for Spear and a foul on Waterman. That's his third. Well, Waterman and Brandon both going up there to prevent that dunk from going in that time. And, uh, Robert Moore is doing a good job on the execution part of it. The dunk didn't go down. He's going to have to make these from the free throw line. Khalil Spear has been limited to just two points here today off one of six shooting in nearly a full half in the first. 18 minutes played for the Colonials. Remember, Rashad Phillips was a big-time scorer for the Titans. They put up a lot of points. I had a chance to broadcast and watch a lot of those games, but... They had a great team, you know, you, you had Willie Green, you know, you had Ferguson, you had some pros, Jermaine Jackson. You, know, you actually had three pros on that team, and they, you know, they made a run in the NCAA tournaments of beating the UCLA team, and, you know, but Rashad was the guy that, that put the points up. Spear follows it up with the Thunder Jam, trying to ignite that bench as he takes a peek over his shoulder to say, yeah, guys, get up. You can't, you can't fall asleep against this team. You know, they're going to be active, and they're going to play. Rashawn Phillips, the all-time leading three-point shooter in Titan history as well, 348. Antoine came in with 302. He has seven already here tonight. Traden Williams, little floater, uh-uh. And right there is Brandon to scoop it up. Titans got to be careful here. Uh, Force turnover that time down the floor. Davis line drive, splash! Antoine yeah. Davis! Yeah. <laughs> and you can see Rob, <laughs> you see Tool over there looking. There's nothing, you know. There's no defense. You know, you, what, what are you going to do when this guy catches on fire and shooting the ball the way he's shooting it tonight is difficult. It looks like that night where he had 48 against Wright State, doesn't it? No, no it looks doubt. I mean, he's very capable. We know that. Effortless right now. He's 11 of 17 from the field, 8 of 12 from three. Williams pump face to the cup late. Dish to Bain and he converts. And guys going to help out that time. Left Bain, Chris Bannon, Brandon uh, on the block shot side, and Left Bain's open to clean the boards up for Colonials that time. Ends up off the shoot tops of Spear, I believe, is it's going to stay with Detroit Mercy. They lead it 42 29. Well, Bulls been getting caught and trapped around the basket right now. He's not able to, you know, first couple games he was able to bag players down, but now the help's coming in. You know, they're forcing some turnovers on him around the basket. Davis catch and shoot, lofts it too far. Yeah, that was it. That was definitely a heat check that time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was one leg falling back into the corner. <laughs> Guys like him won't let it bother him for too long, though. Mm. That's why he's at his best more often than not. Mm. <laughs> Well, Cool is frustrated going to the basket that time, and they've done a good job defensively on him. Uh, able to get a hand on the basketball. Jump ball, arrows pointing in Morris's direction. Robert Morris shooting just 35 and a half percent so far here tonight. Three of nine from three. Williams too strong, and Bo Cool is in perfect position to take it for his sixth rebound here tonight. Good swing pass to Bull off the back of the iron. Davis doing a good job of finding that time. Wasn't able to convert. Spear with a two-handed hook as he falls it through. Right, that's a situation for Chris Brandon where, you know, you, you got to go ahead and take the foul that time. Uh, you know, don't, don't give him an opportunity to get three out of that. Just, you know, go up and, and lay some wood on him in a situation like that. Willie Isiani and Dwayne Rose Jr. are going to check in here for Waterman and Bo Kuol. Kuol has played 22 minutes so far. Same for Antoine Davis. Mike Davis trying to get his team some extra rest when he can. And with an 11-point lead with 16 minutes to go, he can afford to do a bit of that. But not going to fool around as well. Yeah. Nothing is a given. Well, <laughs> like, this is a team you cannot never relax on. 
know, it's got to be 48 minutes consistent basketball right now, and the Titans have yet to find that second score. Mike said as much about Andrew Toole's team. He said, hey, look, I don't understand how they only have four wins. They play so hard and never give up. You got to look at the overtime games they had. They've been in a lot of situations where they've had opportunities to win basketball games, but you can see why. Nine games in the Horizon League, six or fewer. Their deficit by game's end. <laughs> well, he's, you got to love Willie Isiati. I tell you, he gets into the game. I mean, he's been in there probably about 20 seconds. <laughs> Offensive rebound, put back. He's always ready. And Dang. that's the kind of foul I'm talking about. You know, send him to the free throw line. Don't allow him to get the in ones. 44-32, Detroit Mercy. Here's the three-point competition right here. Antoine Davis knocking him down from all over the floor, deep in the corner that time, putting it into the basket. Once again, on the other side of the floor, pass to him, nice little step back right there with ease, knocking him down like layups. I'm telling you, he's right there. Once again, way beyond the three-point line. He drains another one at the top of the key, three steps beyond, out by the logo. He knocks another one down, and right here, you see a nice little step back, and he drains another three-point shot. And once again, there's Antoine Davis. It's been an exciting basketball game to watch with a kid like this that's setting it on fire. There were no repeats there, we promise. <laughs> Both free throws missed by Bain. It's Frazier, Brandon, Isiani, Davis, and Rose here for the Titans. And there's Tracy getting inside. Mike Davis whispered to Tracy after the game, hey, I'm voting you all defensive team. He unfortunately didn't make it. And Mike was disappointed that he didn't make it because of the effort he showed in both games versus Detroit Mercy and what he's seen on film. Well, he's a hard nosed player. No question about it. Rose shy and Ferris digs in for the defensive board there. Hey, the Titans desperately need somebody else to step up to make some shots fair is three ball to get him underneath 10 here and an odd pause as uh, i believe a timeout was they... called or was it hmm. no basket basket's good titans basketball going down let's get the sub subs into the game right now five minutes only elapsed off the clock here in this second half and Robert Morris is still right here, very much in this ballgame. 
Robert Morris has made three of their last four. Detroit Mercy has missed one of their last five. Just five minutes into the contest and the Colonials are digging back. Davis trying to change that. Shy tipped a couple times. Wow, <laughs> through the five hole of Brandon and they kept it. Can't make that up. Johnson got it blocked by Spear and he'll pick it up. Well, here's where your concern come in because, you know, with Davis not scoring the basketball, you have yet to see any other Titans step up uh, to give an offense contribution to this ball club. Spear with the block and the conversion on the other end. He now has 53 career blocks. One of the better players, according to KenPalm.com, on block percentage, right around 6%. Frazier. From the top of the key there down to Brandon. Good dipsy do work there to put it up and through. Uh, Titans desperately needed that bucket right now. Now defense, they need to lock down, play some solid defense. 46 to 37. Wilbon charging his way in and draws a foul. There's Bain. Training staff working on him. We haven't seen him much down the stretch of this game so far. He has eight points and five rebounds. Yeah, I, I mean, I noticed that last game. I mean, he's able to get it done, but I, I think he plays so hard. They have to get him out of the game to get him some rest to get back in to get that contribution out of him. 18 minutes overall for Bain as Wilbon tears the net. Robert Morris is not known to be a good free throw shooting team. Uh, you know, they will miss at the free throw line. Wilbon, a guy they'd like to see more out of. Didn't play a game last year because of a preseason wrist injury. Averaged three and two his first year. And Andy Tool says sometimes the game plays a bit too fast for him, but he's best when he's, you know, diving in and getting in the nitty gritty getting those energy plays off the offensive glass and driving to the hoop. He did that really well in the second half for his Detroit Mercy. Titans up 46 to 39. Frazier fading away off the inside and Brandon able to patty cake it up. Chris Brennan, excellent job of cleaning that up and he's giving them a little bit of offense down this. Back to back buckets for Brandon. 10 rebounds, six points. John Williams misses the long three, and Davis will rebound. Puts it behind his back, nearly lost the handle. Nice swinging pass to Quall, and he hits it. Cool's happy to see that one go down. He's been struggling all game long. They desperately need offense coming from some different directions now. Cool was able to knock one down. Just his second make and five attempts from three. He has 10 and six so far here tonight. Spear three ball, he answers right back. Breaks the mini 5-0 run for Detroit Mercy. You have Frazier, Davis, Quoll, Brandon, and Johnson out there for Detroit Mercy. It's Ferris, Williams, Spear, Williams, Wilbon. It's trading Williams and John Williams. Shot clock already down to nine. Davis digs in. Knife's in the two. You gotta love the mix-up. I mean, we saw a variety of three-point shots, but there you see Davis showing you his version of the mid-range game. 24 at halftime, now 32 in total. Spears struggles with that one. Frazier from nowhere. And the Titans able to draw a foul as I think Davis got slapped on the noggin there. Fouls against Spear. It's the first, believe it or not on the Colonials here in the second half. Titans have four. Well, you see Noah Waterman enters the game right now. Been quiet, you know, all evening here, and you, you know, you gotta look and hope that he can uh, provide some offense. Despite Robert Morris getting back in this game, Detroit Mercy is still out-rebounded them by 10, 28-18. Davis slips off that one, finds Johnson. He's hounded well, flips it up anyway, spun off. And Sumnik newly checked in and is making a stamp on this comeback. Tracy trying to as well. Hot potato and Cole says, let me take it. 
Despite struggling to shoot, he's rebounded pretty well here today. Seven of them. And Mike Davis Jr. told him last game, hey, you're a double-double candidate every game. You need to do that a bit more. For a fairly undersized team in sorts down low with Waterman playing on the outside, they need that once in a while. Five seconds to shoot. Hop step to Brandon with four on the clock. And that's remaining with Detroit Mercy, despite the oohs and ahs from Andy Toole and company on the other side. It's tight all of a sudden. Well, since Detroit Mercy's COVID pause, they've been no joke. They've won 10 of their last 12. Their best player, who's leading them in scoring here tonight, has averaged 28 points per game nearly, shooting 44% from three. You see Brandon doing his thing in the rebounding, and Frazier has taken really good care of the basketball in that stretch as well. I think the COVID pause gave the Titans an opportunity to really get some practice time in, a chance to, for them to get to know each other and work some chemistry stuff out. Uh, it worked to their advantage to have those days off to just get in the gym and work on their game. Johnson had a tip. Tracy ended up with it. Uh, it's the coach's nightmare there. John Williams back outside for Cam Ferris. Lights it up. His third three-point make here tonight. And you think about that COVID pause. Coming into the season, a lot of coaches probably thought that was going to be their worst nightmare. Take a week or two off and not be able to do anything. But for Detroit Mercy, it worked in the direct opposite direction. Titans struggling here offensively and moving the ball around. And once again, Robert Morris is doing an excellent job of pressuring the basketball and not allowing them to get into their offense. You asked Mike Davis what he thought you know, led to them having to come out of the zone earlier than they wanted to last game and just overall not really finishing off the game early like they wanted. He said, hey, a lot of that's on us. It's not necessarily anything that Robert Morris adjusted to. He's not coming out with that same energy as Quo finding his shooting game here in the second half. And that's what the Titans need. They need people to step up and Quo with a couple of buckets here. 12.7 rebounds. John Williams, nice move, couldn't finish, and that man now has 12 rebounds here tonight. Chris Brandon. Also setting a crushing pick right there. Um, for Davis, Davis not able to knock that one down. And a little colder here in the second half, still has 32 off eight three-point makes, 22 field goal attempts, and a nice 
scoop and score. I tell you, you don't see any freshman in Ferris. He's that time knocking down outside shot. Nice move getting to the basket. And if there's any time to completely grow up, it's now, right, if you're Robert Morris? Well, of course, the whole season is built. The freshman tag comes off. Waterman leans one in. Mike Davis was looking for an additional foul to tack on as well. There's only been seven combined fouls between these two teams for on Detroit Mercy thus far here in the second half. Titans still out rebounding the Colonials by 10, 30 to 20. Ferris, nice move there. Great move, looking to attack the basket that time. Shot that one with the off hand that time to knock it down. He has 13, so that's 10 points, eight points and 13 points against the Titans in these three games in a row. Ball on a string, feeds into Tracy that time, who picks up the foul. That's his third. You know, the change in Davis's game is the fact that he doesn't settle for just taking that three-point shot. Uh, he's extremely aggressive. He's realized that the ability for him to take the ball to the basket opens up things for him. And I'm taking a look at Bain over there, and I'm thinking it's, it's an injury problem with him, the reason why he hasn't entered this ball game. I saw the trainers working on him. I see him on the bike back there, and. Uh, I saw him fall down before he came out the last time he was on the court, so I'm thinking that he tweaked something. And he played all but two minutes in that first half. Haven't seen him at all in the second as Waterman does a little post work here for Detroit Mercy. Well, he gave him a little shoulder there. He got away with it. <laughs> Bumped him in. At 6'11", you know, he's getting to score that around the basket. More often than not today, they've been letting him play, though. Except there. <laughs> well. A little slap on the, the steal. The problem with Chris Brandon is he allowed him to get that inside position. Coach Davis is screaming and yelling, you know, not, don't let the guy get that kind of position on you underneath the basket and put yourself in that type of situation. Traded Williams also on the bike. Bain to his left, still talking with the training staff. We heard that Williams was also dealing with a nagging injury that he kind of reactivated in the first half versus Detroit Mercy last weekend. Some injuries in key spots here for Robert Morris, but John Williams, he's looking for a foul after the fact as well, but he converts through the contact. I'll tell you what, Robert Morris is giving you a D all they can handle. Cool. Gonna draw one there. Or oh, the other way around. I mean, Robert Morris is giving, a, giving you a D all they can handle. Mike Davis a bit more loose in practice these days, but uh, letting his team have it right now as Robert Morris barrels back in to this game here. Well, no doubt, he's pretty animated over there about what's going on. He understands that uh, you know you got to continue to play basketball and how crucial it is. And this team, you know, is right there with them right now, despite the great effort you know from Antoine Davis. Uh, this team hasn't flinched. Markel Frazier back in for Dwayne Rose Jr. It's Davis, Waterman, Quall, Brandon, and Frazier for Detroit Mercy. Ferris, Williams, Spear, Tracy, and Wilbon Titans, for Robert Morris. Titans right now got to figure out a way to come up with some stops here on the defensive end of the floor. They haven't been able to control Robert Morris at all. Nifty pass and a finish by Spear. And once again, the penetrations and the dish-offs and the easy baskets for Robert Morris College. It's only the second assist for John Williams. He can do that for days. Came into the series last week and is the leader in the NCAA in assist to turnover ratio. Third to start play here tonight. Quall targets Brandon. Timing was off and mm -hmm. as he corkscrews down the avenue, but a draw foul himself. Fouls more appearance as we trek down the stretch. Robert Morris sailing their way back.
Well, our guy Rob is up for replay man of the year, showing us here how Bain got hurt earlier. Yeah, it looks as if he, it's an ankle or he twisted an ankle or a foot or something when he went down. You see him grabbing his ankle when he hit the floor right here. It's, yeah, you can see it right here. Maybe, mm -hmm. a, maybe it's a calf muscle. But uh, he's a valuable piece for Robert Morris College, and they really miss his presence here in, uh, here in the second half of the ball game. Chris Brandon now has seven points, 12 boards here today. He had eight rebounds, six of them offensive, the most he's had this season on the offensive glass last game. And Detroit Mercy would love to see his game elevate to where they think he can be. Uh, he hasn't, uh, hasn't been able to get involved, but this is the perfect time, you know, around this time of the year for him to start stepping his game up. And this could be a starting point for him right here if they can get through this basketball game. It's a big possession for both teams here. Robert Moore is trying to keep it going and shots like that have gotten them back in it. Cameron Wilbon says hello. Not much you can do about that. Looking to took the ball. He was on his way down to the ground that time and tossed that one up and it went in. Four points for Wilbon to go with a rebound. That was his first field goal attempt here tonight at a pair of free throws. Davis has been quiet but heading to the line where he's at his best. Well, he's, he's had a chance to take a, a little bit of a break, not a whole lot of attempts here, uh, working the ball around, but you know, down the stretch, we know he's still capable of putting points on the board. And Earl, that's the fourth foul on Tracy in this one. Tracy has four, Wilbon has three, Williams has two. One of your leading defenders is in jeopardy of falling out of the ball game here. Well, I mean, with, it, it, it's surprisingly that that hasn't happened to them because the aggressive defense that Robert Morris played has been aggressive and playing hard to just show you that how locked in and how, how they've been all game long. Tracy going to check out for Traden Williams, who is trying to stretch out those legs and the bike. And boy, Antoine Davis just continues to roll his 47 straight make at the free throw line. The Titans are in a full court pressure right now and trying to do something to stop this penetration of Robert Morris because they're looking straight to attack each and every time down the floor. Williams guarded by Davis, screened off a little bit there, trade in to the 10, yes. Once again, able to penetrate, get inside the game, a little bit of floater right over the top of the rim. They've done that probably the last six or seven times down the floor. Robert Morris out shooting the Titans here in the second half, 59% to 53%. Detroit Mercy had nearly a 20% advantage at the end of the first. Quoll has been hot of late, turns one direction, looking for Brandon and Spear stepped in front. Spear has been good defensively as well here today. Five rebounds, two steals, a pair of blocks through 27 minutes for the fighting Colonials here tonight. Traden Williams, back to John. Still plenty of time to roll here. 10 to shoot now. Ferris gets a screen. He's four of his last five. Titans finally able to force a turnover that time. Davis from the parking lot again. You bet. His first in a long time. Yeah, there's absolutely no defense for you know that type of offense there. That's, that's incredible. He has 37 tonight. Nine three ball attempts. Williams arcs it out to Ferris again. Skitters inside. Spear count the basket and one. They are absolutely destroying the Titans on with the inside game right there. Getting the ball inside the penetration and getting inside, getting anything they want around the basket. Spear with 17. And the worst thing you can do is uh, in situations like that, you know, if the guy's going to score the basket, then you know you 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 know you can't let him score the basket and give him the foul. Well, Andy Toole said before the game, I talked to him earlier in the week, that he'd love to see Khalil Spear play a, a few more minutes than he's averaging. He's at around 23 a game tonight. He's already 27, and he's bringing that needed energy that his head coach has been calling for. He's definitely high energy. And, um, see Willie back in the game. Some, get somebody back in there that can stand and try to take some charges and stop that penetration. Well, two times he's come in and made an immediate impact. The first a charge, the second an offensive rebound, and then, and then a two. Let's see what he does here. Antoine 
Got the friendly shooter's roll. Uh, he's showing you a variety of different things right there. Three-point shot comes back, penetrates, lays the softly off the glass. 70 to 60, Ferris from deep. Boinked off the backboard and the iron, and now Davis has a chance at a 40-point game. 39 here tonight. 14 of 24 shooting, 9 of 15 from three. Good handles against Traden Williams. Davis, mm. <laughs> he's gonna earn his money at the line here. A good penetration, getting to the basket right now. I don't know uh, what the timeout situation for Detroit, but the kind of minutes that Antoine's been putting up, they may, they may want to use one of them just to give him a rest uh, going down a stretch with these last four or five minutes in the game. He's already surpassed Dave DeBusher for third all time in Titan scoring. Already notched his 2,000 points in this one, and now he has his fourth 40 point game of his career, looking for his first 50 point game, possibly. Uh -huh. Well, it's still a lot of time left, and that's very capable with the way he shoots the three ball. The Titan record is Archie Tullis. That was versus Bradley back in. 1988, February 22nd, 1988. So it would be three days later <laughs> in February if he's able to get it here tonight. Got a while to go though, but Antoine Davis making a case as Bain continues to stretch it out. They could use him right now. Up above, Titan Reggie is smiling, Earl. Tell you what, it's no no question about it. Titan Reggie would love each and every minute of this and definitely would try to make the road games because he never, ever missed a road game. 72 to 60. We've just learned as well that Antoine Davis has now scored the most games or most points of any Titan in a playoff game as well. The exact prior amount is unknown at this time. We'll have to <laughs> dig deep <laughs> into the record books. <laughs> They're even trying to work that out here at Callahan Hall. We, we do know that Antoine has 41 here tonight and John Williams trying to draw some attention away as he has 14 now. And the game back under a 10 point lead once again. It's been as most as 15 don't leave them open. Things like this will happen. <laughs> Antoine has 44, he, chasing the all-time record in a single game. He has literally put this team on his back. I mean, put them on his back, and he has carried them 
in both halves. Tracy fading away. Wow. Uh, he missed the travel on that one that time, but Tracy was able to knock that one down. And Robert Morris has got an answer for whatever the Titans do. Frazier, Brandon, Quall, Davis, Isiani. Dumps it to Willie. Tipped a few times. Willie got it back. And they'll draw it out and kill some time. That was smart. Oh, no question about it. Willie didn't try to attempt to take that ball back up. Double team is there now. Frazier, ooh, too hot. Ooh, man, we saw him. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He put way too, way too much on that basketball. Detroit Mercy looking for their first tournament win in a while. We can see Davis uh, going to work right now. Basketball, looking for the penetration. Nice little step back inside the game, showing off his mid-range game to go along with the three ball that he's been shooting. And there he comes down, he pulls up right in his face. We've been seeing that all night long. Once again, deep from the corner, he drains another one from down there. And there's no defense to stop Davis right now. Looking to break records here tonight. Five away from tying the all-time single game record in regular season or postseason in terms of points. He's already done it for a postseason game with 44 and counting here tonight. John Williams has been good too. Lost it over the top to Tracy. Hockey passes here. Will Bond couldn't make the big time basket there as Brandon alertly picks up his 13th rebound of the night. Frazier. Davis, Brandon, Waterman, Quoll for Detroit Mercy here up 10. Well, I'll tell you what, Brandon is definitely taking advantage of Thames not being in a ball game. Both of those guys attacking made things a little, little bit easier for Brandon, and he's got a chance to add to that rebounding total here late in the ball game. That's the third, third foul on John Williams. There's three on him, three on Wilbon, and four on Tracy. One and one chance for Waterman as he drills it. That's been the one caveat to Waterman for whatever reason. For a guy that shoots it so well, he's shooting just 64% at the line in limited opportunities. But you got to think by next year, he'll turn that around. Two huge freebies there. They have definitely done a good job of uh, being in his face all night long here, Callahan. All. Seems like a must score possession here for Robert Morris. Traden Williams draws the foul. That against Chris Brandon, that's his fourth. So now Brandon and Noah Waterman with four fouls. This Robert Morris team has already been to five overtimes. Detroit Mercy wants nothing of that here. Well, we, we definitely can see why, because this team is competitive, you know. Uh, regardless of, of what it is, it's very understandable why they've seen five overtimes. This has been a 
thorn in their side all season long from the free throw line. Uh, they don't shoot the ball very well, especially down the stretch at the free throw line. They're just one of four in those overtime periods, but regardless, you throw that out of the window in a playoff scenario, when and you go home, full court pressure. Detroit Mercy hasn't seen any of this in a while. Five seconds to get it over, and Frazier does. And Brandon alertly says, slow it down. And right now, you want to get the ball in Davis's hands if you can. Frazier does just that. Lobs it for Brandon. Crashes it back down as he lays it in. Well, he does a good job that time getting control of that basketball and going back up, making sure that he put that basket down. The fifth assist for Antoine Davis, who also has 44 points, 10 three-point makes. Brandon has a double-double, 10 and 13 here tonight. Two blocks. John Williams, big-time three from the center. No quit. Down to the wire. Robert Morris University is going to give you everything they got. And now they have an opportunity to put on some full-court pressure for the second consecutive possession. Titans didn't panic, but they did have the ball in their hands for, you know, three or so seconds and multiple passes. Well, they were those fortunate because that pressure was definitely there. And uh, see, that was a big three point shot uh, that actually still keep uh, this Robert Morris team right in the ball game. If Detroit Mercy wins, they would face Northern Kentucky. Every round of the Horizon League tournament is reseeded. So the next round, the quarterfinals, and then down in Indy in the semifinals, Detroit Mercy, if they pulled this one out, would travel to Northern Kentucky. Is there a top four seed? They were battling with them in Oakland the last two weeks down the stretch to see who would get that honor. Cool. Off again for Dwayne Rose Jr. Waterman back to Antoine Davis as he settles it down. Doing a good job of moving the basketball. Big possession this time for, for the Titans. And they got the ball in the right man's hand. Davis free lane, got it. Davis. And we've actually gotten clarification. There was a little bit of a misinterpretation, I guess, when people behind the scenes were taking a peek at the record book. That is actually the new all-time record for career playoff points as Spear lays it in. Antoine Davis with 46. Right Just now the clock is definitely a factor right now. 46 seconds left and uh, Rose finds herself at the free throw line with a chance to, to add to a 10 point lead. So he broke Byron Larkin's record back in 1987. Last time a Titan scored 45 points in a playoff game. Antoine has 46, too shy of his mm -hmm. career record. Well, I'll tell you what, we've definitely seen a show here at Callahan Hall tonight out of Davis. And it hasn't had that 40 point game. Rose not able to make either one of those free throws and giving Robert Morris the opportunity to make this more interesting. Titans just 9 of 13 from the free throw line. Spear does just that and Andy Toole says everybody stay where they are and put on some pressure. Mm -hmm. Quoll runs the baseline, finds Davis and he might just try to keep it here. Do got to get it over. Waterman lost the basketball. Rose Jr. got it back. Frazier for the lay in. Tell you what, the Titans really got fortunate on that on that possession. And, and here comes Robert Morris right back at him. All the success. Some contact on that as Davis picks it back up, and he is going to be able to dribble out the time. A good defensive play by Noah that time. He was able to get a hand up. And Titans, I tell you what, in a battle, this Robert Morris team's got nothing to be ashamed of. Antoine Davis with his fourth career 40 or more a game just three points shy of the all-time record for points period this one broke the playoff record at right the here. previous 45 getting all the way to the basket looking at the court only thing was open that time was the rim and there it is 
lays it in softly and he's with the show here at Callahan Hall tonight 46 points 83 to 73.